So polycase is a copper polymer matrix projectile. Copper okay. polymer, copper polymer matrix. Yes. So it, okay. it, we're injection molded. So it's a copper polymer blended material. Okay. So injection molded to make the projectiles. Uh, we make it in the fluted, which is our ARX, and then we make it in the round nose, which is our training. Okay. What is the what is the purpose of the fluting? So it's a non-expanding defensive round. Okay, so it doesn't have to transform. You don't have to worry about any uh, feeding issues like you normally get with a uh, truncated jacket and hollow point. So it's rounded, so it feeds just like a round nose, and it uses fluid dynamics and a lateral transfer of energy to create the wound. So it'll pass through intermediate barriers without any issues. It's spinning, so it's a cutter, so it cut opens, cuts open a wound, and then it uses fluid dynamics. So it forces the fluid in soft tissue into these flutes, it compresses it, and then it forces it out laterally 90 degrees. So that's your lateral transfer of energy. So our projectiles are lighter and faster. So our nine millimeter. I was gonna ask you what the bullet weight is. 65 grain, nine millimeter, moving at 1545 feet per second. The fluid exiting these flutes inside the body moves at one and a half to two times the speed of the projectile. So it comes out close to 3000 feet per second. So if you can picture a boat propeller sitting in the water, when you first turn that propeller on, how it disrupts everything in the water, that's what it does inside the body. Okay. Now it's not spinning all that fast. I mean, what typical rifling twist in a nine millimeter is what? One in 12? Um, I'm not too sure, but I mean, I can definitely find that out. It, but I mean, you get one to two rotations going to a person. Right. So I, I, as far as the uh, revolutions per minute, I'm not too sure what that comes out at, but um, I can definitely find that out, information out for you as far okay. as speed that way. Um, but the, the, the energy that it transfers is massive. Okay, so the intention here is to create a more significant wound than a hollow point? Yes. And you don't have to worry about the transformation of a hollow point. So where a, a, a hollow point needs to transform in order to, to become effective, we don't have that same issue here. So the idea is it works on the principle of fluids, not necessarily hitting a material to expand. Correct. So you're, you're dealing with hydraulics, essentially. Yes, it uses the body to create the wound. Okay, my one concern with that would be barrier penetration. Because it is such a light bullet, it's going to get deflected and, and no, damaged. No, it doesn't get deflected easily. at all. It moves right through those barriers. Okay. So drywall, two by four, denim, leather, sheet metal, um, plywood, been tested through all of that. Side glass. Okay. What is the cost for a projectile? Um, our nine millimeter sits anywhere from nineteen ninety nine to twenty five dollars, so it's standard across the board. That's a box of twenty twenty five or fifty. Nine millimeter in twenty five rounds. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The training ammunition, same copper polymer matrix except it's a rounded profile, hundred percent frangible on hardened steel. So for training aspects, you can shoot steel at close range within a foot and a half. Okay. And it's the same, it's the same grain weight bullet, so you're dealing yes, with the same point of impact. Same point of impact, ballistic match, yes. Same grain weight. Cool. Thank you very We're much. We're here with the ARX booth, polycase ammunition. And we noticed that you have 45 Colt. And the question that came to mind was, why 45 Colt? Well, it's a really popular rifle. There's a lot of cowboy action shooters around that own this cartridge, and a lot of them are using it for hawk hunting. It's a, it's so are you thinking about, I know there's a cost issue here, but are you thinking about targeting the cowboy action shooting for the matches? Because they are getting closer and closer with their steel, and frangible ammunition in a cowboy match actually makes sense. It's it's certainly a, a carryover option you know, from using the frangibility of the case stuff uh, on steel, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that... Uh, we're marketing directly to, to the Cowboy Action community, but with the frangibility of the ammo. That's an interesting concept because we were talking it about is. that on the way over here. They're getting closer and closer with their targets by the nature of the sport. And the idea of a frangible bullet in Cowboy Action makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. And when you're talking about tube-fed magazines, uh, we, we had designed these specifically for safe and reliable feeding in tube magazines with the primer spacers on the ARX. Uh, and being able to get these frangible in a tube-fed mag. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You take your cowboy gun to go kill a hog with it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Certainly. To shoot 45 Colt with your frangible slash defensive ammunition here. 
It's a 158 grain bullet in a 45 Colt, which is quite light because 45 Colt is typically a 250 grain bullet. So you're getting what kind of velocity, do you know? Out of this rifle, we're getting approximately 1,750 feet per second. 1,750 feet per second 13, out of 45 Colt. 1,350. 1,300 feet. 1,350 out of 45 Colt. Typical 45 Colt, a 250 grain bullet at around 800 feet per second. So that's a huge increase in velocity, although a huge increase in, in mass. So I'm going to fire and just see what the recoil is like. Thank you. It doesn't feel like full house 45 Colt, but you can definitely feel that there's a gun going off. So it's somewhere in the middle, I would say. I'm sure you're you're getting a little more velocity. There's recoil there, but it's not as bad as a full house load. Pretty interesting. All right, so we just got done talking to the polykeys guys about this ammo. And yeah. I think the frangible part's really compelling and interesting. Frangible yeah. ammunition's always cool. Yep, I have no doubt that it's frangible. And I think that if we can get some of it, which they said they'll send us some, we'll do some cool stuff shooting at ridiculously close ranges on steel. Yeah. Maybe even include it in the two gun battle. Maybe. But as for this hydraulic damage thing where this bullet turns and causes hydraulic damage as opposed to opening up like a hollow point. I mean, the first thing is you'd better make sure that the rifle and twist is the same direction that they designed the bullets. Oh, I didn't even think about that. You Actually, the twist rate would matter. Or the twist direction. The twist direction matters, yeah. As I well think. as the velocity. This would be velocity and then at that point, gyration speed dependent. Right. Because if this, is, if this theory is it's a propeller, and as a result of being a propeller, it's causing churn within hydraulic fluids, then it's got to be going fast. Right. And if you're going slow, you're not getting it. Well, they are going fast. Yeah. I'm dubious as to how well that will actually go through stuff, because light bullets, by their very nature, are easily... Well, ac actually, let's bring that up. Okay. The frangible and this is made out of the same material. Yeah. Okay, so wait. So it's definitely not going to go through steel. This, this, well, right. But let's 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 take that logically to a okay. consistent end. If the frangible stuff and this is made out of the same, yet he touted how this is still good at barrier penetration. That One seems of the two ain't going to work. I guess you have to describe what does barrier mean. Right. So you know, hollow points can get clogged in clothing and material. Yep. And that's this would not have that problem. Correct. So maybe that's what he means by barrier. But when I hear barrier penetration, I think glass windshields, automobile vehicles, car doors, yeah. uh, plywood. And he said plywood. He did. Frangible will go through plywood, not steel. But you're still kind of interesting in that it's frangible, yet goes through barriers really well. It's a magic bullet. Well, maybe. I, we're going to try to get some samples and give it there, a try. There may very well be some subtlety in here that we're not uh, getting at this moment. So. I don't know. I can't, I can't make a conclusion. I would say the frangible sounds really cool. I'd love to try it. I'd say for this, we want to put this through some ballistic soap, as well as with some barriers between it and the ballistic soap and test bolt. Yep. I agree. So we're going to try to get some guys and let you know more, but it's, I don't know what to say yet. Stay tuned.